Okay, so last year I made a terrarium and I put a little worrywart inside of it. I thought it was a cute idea at the time and I still do. I had actually forgotten about it and left it for a year and I decided that I was going to make a short showing the results of my negligence and what had happened to it. I don't know what that is, but it looks special. And it basically turned out looking like a zombie. <laughs> you all really seemed to love that and I got a ton of comments asking me to try and recreate it. And so that's what we're doing today. Now, I just wanted to let you know, I thought that I was going to be making a short like last time it actually turns out that this process was a lot more involved than I had thought it was going to be, but it turned out that things got a little bit complicated and this process took a lot longer than I had expected. So here we are making a long instead of short. <laughs> Let the zombification begin. So we got our mushroom here. I am not going to be doing the waffle top. I'm aiming for sort of like a blue ghostly Amanita vibe. And I'm also definitely going to be trying to figure out how I'm going to get these cataracts on the eyes, as well as this sort of like bruised effect that it's got all over it, where it looks like it's kind of like moldy bread or dirty. So we're gonna have to figure out how I'm going to do those things. I started off my process by building the tops before anything else. To get the sort of gnarly and bruised effect that I'm going for, I am actually going to be using powdered pigment instead of paint to color the tops of our mushrooms, and I'm going to be doing them first so that I can wash them eventually. I tested out our pigment on one of the tops that had cracked a little bit. Sometimes this happens when there's a little bit of pressure or if you add a little bit too much alcohol to the surface. I was thoroughly pleased with how sort of necrotic they ended up looking, like they were kind of rotten and bruising. So I baked them and gave them a little bit of a wash so that none of the pigment would transfer over. I also laid them out on a tray and gave them ample time to dry off because let me tell you, clay and water don't mix. That's actually how you get busted clay in the oven. Once everything had thoroughly dried, I used this special custom paint that I had made. It's a secret recipe that I developed to paint on my worry warts so everything ends up looking nice and smooth. While our tops got a little bit moody, get it? Cause they look like cow print. I was actually thinking of ways to lighten up the eyeballs that I I had already pre-made. My first instinct was to use rubbing alcohol because that gets stuff off of everything and I also use it for everything. I've been able to remove year old hair dye from my bathtub or Sharpie from a wall with it. So my thoughts were if we were looking to desaturate, this might be our best candidate. I'm just gonna say I made this process harder than it needed to be. I'm making this way more complicated than I need to. I thought that I was simplifying things by dumping everything out and then flipping it over and using a pipette to cover it in alcohol. That was not the case. These are making a very unique sound now that they are wet. And I just wanted to share that with you. It sounds like pop rocks. You know what would have been easier? If I just threw this in a jar of alcohol, but of course I had to do it the hard way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like I just thought of that after lining this up perfectly. It would have been way easier if I just tossed this in a jar of alcohol and then shook it. I'll come back in a little bit to see if this has done anything. So these have been sitting here for over three hours and not a whole heck of a lot has happened except for maybe whatever that is. So we are going to grab them and put them inside of a jar of the rubbing alcohol now to see if that does anything and I'm probably gonna leave it overnight. Th thanks for the interruption. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh my God, that's, that's dramatic. Okay, maybe someone should stop him. I just wanted to interject here and say that something real silly is about to happen. <laughs> can't get it. I can't get it. Like, I literally am trying. I can't. They won't come. Ah! <laughs> they won't come off. What do I do? They're just like bonded. It's like they are one now. What? There's a part of me saying that if I dry up the alcohol, things will get better. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my Atlanta. Well, this is gonna take a long time. I'll see you when this is done. It is done. Okay, if that doesn't do something, I don't know what will. I'll just give you guys a little shot of what they look like right now and we'll come back in a couple hours. Okay, so it is the next morning and absolutely nothing has changed. And I realized that I probably should have tested my theories on maybe like one or two eyes instead of testing it on 120. So that's what we'll do for our next attempts. Now that the alcohol solution was not working, which was frankly heartbreaking because I use that stuff on everything, I had to turn to bleach. 
not that bleach, kind of bleach that lightens things. Now for anybody that's concerned about the fact that I'm about to use bleach on these, I just want you guys to know that I'm only using stuff that is safe for clothing or for people. I'm not using a mega jug of Clorox. I only want to use stuff that would be safe to get close to my skin. And I'm going to be rinsing everything so thoroughly. I just wanted to make that clear as cannoli. Cannoli is not very clear, but it is very delicious. Anyways, so with a bit more experience in our pockets now, I had these tiny jars and I filled them with a small and modest amount of eyes. The first bleach that I decided to use or lightener that I decided to use was Bora. It's really gentle. I think you actually use it in slime as an activator, but it's generally used to pull extra dirt out of laundry. I am a washing machine simulator. <laughs> I may just be seeing things, but even after just a few little wiggles, it's already starting to pull some color out. So that's pretty exciting. Looks like blue milk. Now the second bleach that I'm going to use is actually a little bit of hair bleach. I had thought about this because I was about to color my hair and I was starting to run out of options with the eyes. And then I thought, what if I used a little scoop of this to see what happens? After I'd mixed everything up, I decided to leave it overnight. Okay, so it is the next day and we have a little souffle as well as some blue soup. Some blue. Blue? So let's see what's inside of these. Oh. It just melted it? It melted off. Well, we got the effect we wanted, uh, but it melted off. I left it for too long, but we have success. <laughs> Oops, we have success. Now I just have to figure out the right amount of time to do it without it melting. Oh. Well, it made a cool effect, but it is not as effective as the bleach bleach. What I was going for was kind of this like ghostly cataract that you can see there. More, because this is just white now, so I have to figure out the perfect time. So I think we're gonna go with the hair bleach. So I mixed up a second batch of the bleach and I kept a little bit of a closer eye on it. I just went to the bathroom and I noticed this on the side. So I was gonna leave them overnight, but I wanna pull one out now to see what's going on. Most hopeful I've been. Okay, I've got a little cup of water here to rinse it off. It's made this appealing little foam. Whoa! 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 <laughs> My friend's over. <laughs> Whoa! Okay. I'm gonna leave these until the morning. Look at that. It, oh, we'll see. Now I let this stuff sit in my bathroom overnight in a safe place just to make sure that I wasn't making a mess in the rest of my house. And this is what I came back to in the morning. Do you see that? That's amazing. Oh my gosh. These are perfect. So cool. I rinsed out the borax as well and sadly was not as excited to see it. Here are both eyes. The borax actually didn't do that much, but the hair bleach is awesome. I really like these. So I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and use these ones. They're not exactly like what the mushroom looks like inside of the terrarium, but they are creepy and I wanna see how that goes. Now that I had figured out the correct time and the correct recipe, I got this giant cup and I filled it up with a bunch of the hair dye and I just decided that I was going to check on it like I had the other batch to make sure that it was churning out as consistently. Okay, so it's the next morning and it is nice and foamy. Satisfying. Oh. Oh wow, it's like gelatinous in there. I can't really see the results so far and whether or not I should leave it, so I'm gonna rinse one of these off. We're not quite there yet. I'm gonna leave it for a few more hours. It's almost where I want it. After a few more hours and I'd done a few test checks just to make sure that they were the same quality of the first batch, I rinsed these out. I wanna see at least five or six times just to make sure there was nothing left on them. Uh, I've come over here and these seem lighter than they were so I feel like I need to let these mature for a little bit to see what's gonna happen. Yeah they're even lighter now. Cool. I did a little bit of research and I found that bleach can sometimes lighten a little bit more even after it's been thoroughly washed out when it's exposed to UV lights like the sun. So that was a fun little bonus and I feel like these eyes look like partially developed Polaroids which is Awesome. Now that I had overcome the mountain that was doing those eyes, it was time for our final task of assembling everything and getting it finished. It was kind of awesome how the eyes ended up matching the tops, even though that wasn't something that I had intended. There was this really cool hue of blue in there that matched the sort of bruised tops that we'd created. And I didn't have control over that. It just happened. Well, he looks like he's definitely seen some stuff. I also tried adding some spots to the rest of the clay, but I decided it looked weird and gave it a miss. And now it's time for the moody glamour shots. Oh 
Oh yeah, and I secretly made them glow in the dark, because I always do that. I always make everything secretly glow in the dark. Now because the process of doing these eyes took so long and it didn't necessarily exactly replicate the cataracts, I did something special for those of you that might be mad at me for that. I have gotten the exact glass jar that I used for the terrarium and I have covered a bunch Oops. of eyes in dirt and I will be leaving it until next year so that hopefully we can make something with it. It'd be a good idea to subscribe so you can see it then. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey today. I hope you enjoyed what we created. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and whether you'd like to see me do something with the eyes that I buried in dirt a year from now. If you feel like interacting in some way to let the robots know that you enjoyed this video so it will show it to other humans like you, that would be awesome. And if you feel like supporting our channel, we've got a Patreon, which is slowly growing day by day and it helps to support our YouTube channel directly. We've also got an online shop where I sell a bunch of really cool stuff and by supporting us there, you help me to continue making weird and wonderful projects like this. Stay crusty and be kind to yourself. Okay, I love you. Bye! I did good.